Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be starting chapter two in genetics where we're going over, well, I'm gonna break this up into three parts to make it a little easier for you to digest over you know, the next couple videos. The first part here is all about the chromosome structure and organization. Uh, the second part will be about eukaryotic cell division. So first we gotta understand how chromosomes are shaped and what they look like, different forms they come in to then understand how they separate in cell division and then the last part then so second part is mitosis if you remember what that is and then third part then is sexual reproduction or meiosis so producing or germ cells producing eggs and sperm so we'll be talking about that one in the third part and then after this chapter we'll be getting into heredity so let's start out by getting into chromosome structure and organization so i know we talked about chromosomes a little bit in the first video uh, but i just want to reiterate some of the important parts here. Uh, so first, just the definition of a chromosome. Remember, chromosome is the DNA, that's the genetic uh, material, uh, plus the packaging proteins. Uh, so remember, these packaging proteins uh, are typically histones. But there are some proteins that uh, are in the prokaryotic chromosomes are just not considered eukaryotic. So then we can compare prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Uh, most... Um, information in this course will be about eukaryotic but we always mention prokaryotic because they're important as well so remember prokaryotic are bacteria and archaea eukaryotic you know plants animals us uh, so chromosome wise prokaryotic have one per cell and then eukaryotic one or more so remember humans have 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes in every single cell uh, now where it's located this Prokaryotic is just in a nucleoid region. It's not bound by a membrane nucleus. And then eukaryotic, of course, are in that nucleus. Then uh, the shape of the chromosomes, remember, uh, prokaryotic are circular. And then eukaryotic are linear. So we'll see the generic representation of a chromosome like that. We'll describe the different parts coming up here soon. And then how they're packaged, uh, remember, uh, bacteria, they have uh, no histones, and then archaea have some. So some archaea do have histones, and then eukaryotic cro chromosomes do have histones present. So that's just a quick comparison between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. Just to talk briefly about prokaryotic cell division, remember that's known as binary vision. We talked about this quickly last chapter, so I just want to draw it out one more time. So binary fission is an example of a sexual reproduction. The cell pretty much goes through mitosis and separates itself, so the genetic information is 100% identical. That's a sexual reproduction. So here you start out with an E. coli cell with the circular chromosome in the middle um, on you know, bacteria chromosomes. If this is E. coli, there's an origin. So here, uh, red is the origin. It's the origin of replication. It's where the machinery comes in and starts. Uh, so the first step here in binary fission, of course, is you have to replicate the DNA. So you replicate that DNA. And then, remember, it's, it's not like a nice circle in the cell. These could be all twisted up around each other. Uh, so you then have to get them to opposite sides. And here's where the, the origin becomes important. The origin actually helps send each circular chromosome polar so then pulls it to each side of the cell the cell can then go through division you know breaking down the middle and then we can produce two new cells with the chromosome so some bacteria can duplicate do this event every 20 minutes so very very quickly and that's why you can go to bed feeling you know maybe a slight itch and you wake up sick um, remember every 20 minutes is a doubling time quite a bit uh, so next up here, going into eukaryotes, and that's, you know, again, the focus, so the eukaryotic chromatin. So chromatin ends in IN, that is DNA and protein. So DNA plus packaging proteins, histones. Um, so DNA and proteins. So, you know, same kind of as a chromosome, it's just, we just call it chromatin all together because this can come... Usually when we refer to a chromosome, it's the condensed version. Uh, the uncondensed version we call chromatin. Uh, and so uncondensed meaning it's un unwound. So DNA typically wraps around these histone proteins. Let's say these are histone proteins. Think of DNA as like 
thread on a spool. Like that, it can get tangled easily. You know, when you take thread off a spool, it can make a big mess. Uh, so to move DNA and to, to duplicate it and move it to two new cells, you need to condense it down into something that's not going to become a tangled mess. So we use these histone proteins, and the DNA wraps around these proteins, and then those proteins then wrap around each other, forming a nice, compact chromosome. So that's the difference between uncondensed and condensed. So here, uncondensed is also active. So say you have a gene in this region right here, you can bring in the tran transcription factors to come in and turn that into messenger RNA. But if that gene is a, in that histone region, you can't get the machinery in there, you can't get the proteins in there to activate that. Um, so gene expression happens in the uncondensed phase. Now, if there's a gene between two histone, you unravel a little bit, you can get it a little bit, uh, but here, mostly inactive or condensed. And also another uh, thing I want to mention here, the condense is easy to move, which is very important. Think about cell division, what we'll be talking about in the next video. All right, so now I just want to go over the structures of a chromosome. First, at the ends of the chromosome, so this is an unduplicated chromosome, this is a duplicated chromosome, meaning this side replicated itself and made an exactly same chromosome, well, sister chromatid, on the right. So the first part here is we have the ends of the chromosomes. These are called the telomeres. So telo is end. Uh, so these are the telomeres. There's a whole telomere theory of aging, which we'll get into later this semester. So those are protective caps found on the ends of the chromosomes. No genes are found there, and they're there to protect the chromosome because we'll talk about how there's a telomere shortening event that occurs. At the center of the chromosome is an area called the centromere. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with a region, and I'll draw this in blue here, that forms around sister chromatids here, called the kineta core. Kineta core is a, a group of proteins that come in around the centromere, and then spindle fibers can come in and connect to the kineta core and separate it during cell division. So kineta core. So don't uh, mix that one up. Other parts we have here, so this over here is a chromatid, and then, so these ones down here, I'll redraw this blue line, uh, sister chromatids is how you refer to them. Oops. So this is an important designation. So it's based on the number of, so one way uh, students or you know, people get confused when they're looking at this is when we're counting chromosomes. This is considered one chromosome. Deals with the number of centromeres. This is also considered one chromosome, one centromere. Now, when these things move away from each other in cell division and anaphase, the centromere splits and then each one has its own centromere and then it's considered two chromosomes. So we'll get into that more in the next chapter. But right now we're just looking at the structures of the different chromosomes. All right, so now the chromosomes have different shapes. You know, this is how we generically draw them, but they all don't look the same. Uh, so they can be metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, or telocentric. So here is something called a karyotype. So karyotype, is pretty much an image of all your chromosomes. It's a you know ordered image of all your chromosomes. So what I mean here, so this is for humans, uh, and this X, Y, so this is a male. These are all the chromosomes in this individual. Now they all have slightly different shapes, lengths, forms, and function. Now you can't really see it well in this karyotype, but all these have a centromere location. So some of them have a centromere located right there. Uh, some of them are more knob-like right at the end of the Y chromosome. Uh, now here, these, so number one, I can't really make out where number one is. Let's say number two is then right there. So it's more in the middle. So all these types of chromosomes get a slightly different designation. So, well, different names. So first one here is a metacentric chromosome, which is the most basic one where it's in the middle for meta. Uh, next one is submetacentric, where you have a shorter arm and then a much longer arm. So these arms also get a designation. So the shorter arm is called the P arm or petite arm, and the longer arm is the Q arm. So this P and the Q is important for describing gene location. So let's say we have a gene located right there, and this is chromosome five. Uh, you would designate that as five P, and then the distance it is away from the centromere. So something like, you know, 29.6 maybe. 
Uh, we'll talk about that designation a little bit more later. And then an acrocentric one is one that has really small, like extra small arms up there, and then long bottom arms. So this is then called the long arm. And then this is known as a knob or satellite arm. And then the last one here is a telocentric, so pretty much no ends. Nothing is there. Uh, just the telomeres. And then you have the part coming down here. So uh, pretty much nothing at the top part right there. So just four different names we have for the chromosomes. Uh, and then the last little bit I want to go over here is how we dis define chromosome number. So earlier I said, you know, humans, we have, you know, 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. So if we look up here, 23 pairs. So one of these is from, oops, one of these is from the father and one of these is from the mother. You get one from the father and the mother. And right here in the black line, this particular uh, staining for this karyotype has labeled some specific uh, gene region. So there, let's say that's a big A and a little a. So that's how we define these chromosomes. And so chromosome number is the number of chromosomes in the nucleus. So when we def define these then, again, they come in pairs and they're called homologous chromosomes or homologs. So like chromosome one, each of these is, this is called a homologous pair, one from the father, one from the mother. So the same chromosome type and also same size and shape. So if you look up here, same size and shape, meaning that's how they match these up. So when they take this image, they then match up the different label genes so they can then form this orderly arrangement. Then the last thing are that the genes for the same traits at the same loci, um, same genes at same loci. So that's why I just described earlier, with like the big A, little a right here. So at the same loci, the same part of that chromosome. So this is also how one way you can define species, the number of chromosomes found in a nucleus need to match. So if you look at something like a horse and a donkey, so a horse has 64 chromosomes, a donkey has 62. That makes them slightly different as a species. And you know what happens if you mate a horse and a donkey, you create a mule. Uh, so we'll talk about later why mules are infertile. It deals with 64 chromosomes in a horse and 62 in a donkey, and that forms cells that have an uneven amount of chromosomes. Uh, so they have 63 then. And when those 63 chromosomes try to go through meiosis, they don't create even daughter cells with the same number of chromosomes. That makes them infertile. And then last thing I want to talk about here is ploidy level. This deals with the number of homologs. So number of homologs meaning the number of pairs. So first here, I know you can't read that, so I'll write it again. We have haploid, which is defined by N, and then diploid, which is defined by 2n. So n is equal to the number of pairs. So humans have 23 pairs. So n is equal to 23 in humans. And so here, n is equal to 3 in this generic cell type here. And then if you include the pairs, the homologous pairs, you have 2n. So 2 times 3 is equal 6 here. So here, each of these is a pair. So pink, pink, blue, blue, green, green. In humans, so 2, 23, of course, is 46. And that's where we get the 46 number. Um, so plants can also get weird. They can have like tetraploidy, euploidy, lots of different ploidy levels. So it's not just haploid and diploid. You can have higher ones. But most of the time, we're just talking about haploid versus diploid, especially for humans. Um, so that's the, the focus of the start of this chapter here. Again, this is the first video of three for chapter two. So just I just wanted to go over some basic information about chromosome structure and organization, talking about prokaryotes a bit, and then going into the details for eukaryotes. And this terminology will help us next chapter when we start going through mitosis, and then the, not next chapter, next video, still same chapter, and then after that going through meiosis. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, please let, let me know and be on the lookout for that next two videos coming soon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.